Hey guys, um, I just wanted to talk about being a good listener today. Um, many of us are coming into union, um, so, and that means coming into a relationship finally with your true love, <laughs> and also coming into union within your heart, your, your uh, feminine and, and masculine aspects. But um, one of the keys to being successful in a relationship is really knowing how to listen to your other person. So I have such a, a great example of, of listening <laughs> or how miscommunications can happen. But one of, the, one of the keys to being a good listener is to not look for differences that you guys have in your opinions, but looking for the commonality. If you guys can get on the same page about what you both feel passionate about, what you both feel you agree on, no matter the differences, then you guys can actually start to get somewhere. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I had this, uh, I had this gal, the Divine Feminine. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's going to laugh so hard if she sees this. Um, I was encouraging her to do what I call the deer exercise. Um, and you and you find out you can read all about it in the Tao of Sexology, but but it's ba basically an exercise that a woman can do to balance her hormones, and um, and she can use the heel of her foot to do the exercise, or she could use a tennis ball or something um, like around that size, um, something round. <laughs> and uh, so I talked to her. I said, "Did you?" I was, you know, touching base with her again after the, uh, her prior session. I said, did you do the, have you done the deer exercise yet? She goes, well, there's just something about it. Like I just, uh, I'm just really putting it off. I just don't really feel like doing it. And I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's just something about it that I, just, I don't, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just really putting it off. There must be a block or something. And, and I thought, well, you know, sometimes when you have a block or something like that, you, um, you got to kind of break it down and go through the steps of like one time I, I wanted to, I wasn't working out and I felt all this pressure, like I needed to work out, but I wasn't doing it. And so I was like letting go of the pressure and then it would rise up again. And I was like, okay, I, I need to just finally look at that. If something is keeps tapping you like that, it's like, you got to break down the steps. Right. So I thought, what is it? Like when I actually go to exercise, you know, what is this? And, um, and I thought, oh, I had a sheepskin rug that was on a carpet and it was making it, I would have to move the sheepskin rug every time I wanted to do certain Pilates exercises. So I realized, oh my gosh, I just need to like remove the rug and then I'll do what I need to do. And it totally worked. So it was really funny. And that popped in my head when I was talking to her, because I was really paying attention to what she was saying, being a good listener. And I thought, okay, let's break down the steps. And a good listener also um, is listening with their intuition, like, like me paying attention to what popped in my head. So um, I said, okay. Um, I said, why don't you take me through the steps of, you know, you're, you're about to go do the deer exercise for the evening. She goes, well, for one, I just feel like it's going to be this real involved, long process. And I was like, nah, it just takes like maybe three minutes, three to five minutes tops. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, the other thing is, she says, <laughs> she says, I, I just can't picture how sitting on a basketball will help. <laughs> I was like, sitting on a what? And she said, a basketball. Basketball and tennis ball. And she's like, no, no, no. I read that many, many times. And it said basketball every time. And I was just dying. We were cracking up. But it was like, you know, even sometimes our brain plays tricks on us when it really doesn't want us to do something. It's really our egos that don't want to do whatever that is. Because then we'll start feeling good. God forbid we should feel good. <laughs> so, um, Anywho, that was, uh, that was pretty hilarious. And she said, I'm going to look it up in the book as soon as we hang up. And so she looked it, she looked it up and she circled it. She sent it to me. She goes, it was a baseball. <laughs> oh gosh. It's just so, it's just so funny. The mis, the miscommunications and misunderstandings people can have 
we all do it, you know, we all um, just need to break down the steps when we get stuck like that and just really ask ourselves, you know, what, what really is it that's keeping me from doing this? And, and instead of making it some woo-woo idea, I must have a blockage or I must have like, there must be something, you know, to this. Just try to just logically think it through. Like, what is it that I actually, I go to do it? And then I'm like, no. <laughs> anyway, so um, being a good listener, here's how that looks. You listen to what the other person has to say. And at first you're like, at first you're, you have to make your focus about them and you got to take your own personal stuff out of it. Pretend you are a counselor, pretend you are um, somebody who doesn't know them, a complete stranger. You can't make it about you. Even if they're talking about you, you got to remove you from the table and focus on the feelings the person is expressing. Okay. So if you're talking to your partner and she's saying she's really aggravated, frustrated, and angry at you, then what you focus on is anger, frustration, and, um, and all the feelings that she's having. And look at her as a human being who is having feelings and take you out of the equation because honestly, um, it really isn't about you. What somebody is feeling about you, what they're getting triggered on is about them. They're projecting on you, but you can't say that to them because that's going to get them all defensive. Um, but that's always what's going on. That's always the case is that we're always, um, you know, perturbed by other people doing things that we're actually doing. Uh, but it's not, but it's the softness. It's the softness and the safeness in which you can express that enables you to actually make that epiphany and that connection. So um, make your focus about him or her. Listen to them completely. And do not, um, do not read into anything. Just say, okay, anger, and then ask questions. Say, uh, like say somebody says they don't feel, they don't feel, like I used to work in the senior living industry and people would talk about feeling safe and secure. You know, I just want my parents to be safe and secure in this community. And I would ask them, uh, all right, so what does safety and security look like to you? Because in my mind, that would probably mean that the doors are locked at night. Nobody can sneak in or something like that, right? But to them, it might mean like there are people patrolling back and forth in the front and the back of the building, like very specifics about, and they're like patrolling with a gun, for example, or with walkie talkies. You know, to them, security looks a lot different than my security would look. So always ask questions like, what do you mean by safety and security? And then they'll explain. And then when they explain that, oh, I, want the, I want the guys with the guns, like, to be patrolling back, you know, in the front of the building and the back of the building. So you'll be like, why the front and back? Why the guns? Did the gun, is it the guns or is it the, the guys on duty? Or the, or the guys being like intimidating, what aspect of that is what really makes you feel secure? So dig and dig and dig and don't at any point turn it around on you. Well, I feel that way too. Some, sometimes I want some safety and security because your turn comes after. Your job is only to listen to them completely and thoroughly. And because when you validate them, all of the shields come down. And if you're a really, really good, thorough listener like this, you, you will win their heart as well as the defenses coming down and the walls coming, and they will open up to you like, like never before. So listen, 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 ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, um, and then they'll tell you a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, kind of like easing into it. They're not going to just like blurt out everything, not the real stuff right at front, you know, but you as you're demonstrating and showing them that you're a good listener, you, they will open up more and more gradually in that conversation. And then when you get to a point where, um, where you feel like she's probably said all that she needs to say, let's just use an example of how a husband can listen to a wife. So once he's completely heard her out and he thinks she's probably done, then he needs to ask. It's like, think of it as like milking out the last bit of juice that you can possibly milk out. It's super important, this part. So then you say to her, um, so is, is, does, did we cover the full spectrum of what safety and security means for you, whatever the subject is? 
And then she'll say, well, there's also this aspect of the, you know, if somebody should crawl up the side of the building, and then you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then you'll be like, go do it all again. Do it all again. It'll be worth it. Trust me. Then you go up the side of the building. You go, okay, what makes you feel, what, what, what about that alarms you to think somebody can do it? Like, you know, the side of the building. And then what do you think could guard against the side of the building? And then you go through all of that and listen very thoroughly, not interrupting about your own stuff, not getting defensive about what that, you know, don't make that about you and how, well, I've always tried to supply somebody on that side of the building. Like I always try to do my best, you know, don't do that. Gosh, it's not about you when you're listening to somebody. Uh, it's, it's like, it can be habit to do that, but try and catch yourself because you got, if you're a good listener, then she'll be a good listener back or vice versa. So, um, you know, address the whole thing of the side of the building. And then you, then you're like, okay, so if all of that, then with that, do I, do I have a good, do I have a, am I reflecting back to you what you're trying to communicate to me about the safety and security? Do I get it? You know, and just let that, just let her really think through it. Do I get the concept you're trying to convey to me about safety and security? Well, she'll be like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you ask, are you sure? So not only have you listened, but then she had more to add. And then she may have had more to add. And then she may have had more to add, right? A lot of this is fluff. A lot of this is testing you. A lot of this is to see if you really care and if you're really listening. And this is subconscious. They don't even know that they're doing this, right? But when you squeeze, squeeze a little bit more out and you're just like, are you sure? Do you think I really get what you're trying to say here? Then they're, they're like, wow, that's really like, how sweet. Like, hmm, how interesting. I've never had somebody treat me like this. Sorry, somebody's like texting. Probably a group text, but. Um, it's like, you know, not only did you care enough to listen to all these different aspects of it so you could fully, totally understand the whole thing of how she sees safety and security, but then you care enough to say, do I get it? Are you sure that I get it? Like, is there anything else you really want to explain about that? And then she's like, no. And then even more, you guys, if you can master this, you'll just, you wouldn't believe what this will do for you in your lives. But um, that one little topper of, are you sure there's not anything else? And in that moment, she will tell you the truth. Finally, after all of the 45 minutes of conversation that you had prior, none of that actually mattered. You'll get to the heart of the matter only when you're like, are you sure? At the very, 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 very end. The defenses will be down. You will have won her over. Her heart will be open. She will feel appreciative and grateful. And also in that moment when she's completely heard, then she can best listen to you from an open heart, an unguarded heart. And she can, um, she can do you the same favor. Now, she may not do it right away because she hasn't learned this from a video like you just did. but. Uh, and don't get mad if she doesn't. And you could even like teach her how to do this process or show her this video or something like that. But um, if you guys can both do this for each other, it's like life changing, right? And you guys get on the same page and you can keep your defenses down and you can um, each like, um, you know, not learn to not make it about you and just learn how to be a good listener and it'll make all the difference. Um, and also, Take, taking personal responsibility is key. Like don't do anything that you can't accept the consequences for. But I have a, a part one and part two on taking personal responsibility. If you guys want to look that up, go on YouTube too. But anyway, hope this helps. And um, ask me any questions you want in the comments or we could, you could order a private session to talk to me personally about this, about your particular situation, I could feel into intuitively like how your partner will respond, where the blockages are when you guys are trying to do this and it's not working and we can work through it together. So um, my services can be found at amysatori.com. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And if you like this video, please 
hit the bell notifications um, little icon there and um, and stay in touch. And thank you again, and I'll talk to you the next time I make one of these. Bye.